Okay, so let's solve some refraction problems using Snell's Law. So if you remember, Snell's Law is n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2, right? So this first one is pretty straightforward. Index of refraction of crown glass for red light is 1.514, but for blue light it's 1.528, right? So we have light, and it's going to go from air to glass, and here's my normal line. The red light is going to bend towards the normal sum, right? But the blue light is going to bend more because blue light's got a bigger index of refraction. And so we're trying to figure out what's that angle of refraction between red and blue. Okay, so let's start with Snell's Law. So there's Snell's Law. I need to solve for theta 2, right? So I can divide over n2, right? So divide by n2, that cancels it out over here. And then if I take the arc sine of this whole side n1 sine theta 1 over n2, that'll leave me with theta 2, right? So that's going to be the arc sine of n1 is air. Air has an index of refraction, but it doesn't tell you it's 1, right? Uh, theta 1, it tells me that the incident angle was 30 degrees. So 1 sine 30 over red light's index is 1.514. And so if I do that, I get, let's find out, sine 30 over 1.514. No, I got to do sine 30 first. Sine 30 over 1.514. And then I take the arc sine. Gives me 19.28 degrees. 19.28 degrees. All right, that's my angle for the red. So the blue should be the same concept, right? Except I'm just swapping out, because it's the same angle here. I'm just swapping out a different index of refraction, right? So theta blue should be 1 sine 30 over 1.528. The arc sine of all of that, right? Should be the arc sine of that whole thing. Same thing as up there, right? So if I do that, sine 30 hit enter, divided by 1.528, then take the arc sine, 19.10. Right, and so that makes sense to me because I'm saying that blue has a bigger index of refraction, right? So the blue light should bend more, which means that angle of refraction should be closer to the normal, which it is, right? It's a smaller angle than red. So it works out. Okay, so next one, a light source located 2.2 meters below the surface of swimming one point. Oh no, I already know I'm gonna have to draw a picture, right? So this is gonna involve me doing some trigonometry. Pools filled to the top with water. Yeah. Okay, so this is one of these, right? So does the light reaching the edge of the pool leave the water? Okay, so let's say the light's coming here, and then it's gonna bend coming out. So <clears throat> this is 2.2 meters, right? From there to there. And this is 1.1 meters. And this is my theta 1. And then right here, this will be theta 2, which is what I'm trying to figure out. So the index of refraction of water is 1.33, and it doesn't tell me, so air is going to be 1. So I can solve this, but I need to figure out the angle first, right? And luckily I'm given two sides, right? So I can use trigonometry. So if I know these two sides and I want that angle, it'd be easiest for me to use tangent. So the tangent of an angle is the opposite over the adjacent side, right? So uh, if I want the angle, I can take the arctan of the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the opposite side is 1.1. The adjacent side is 2.2, so that should give me theta 1, the arctan of that, right? So let's do that. 1.1 over 2.2 is a half, right? Because 1.1 times 2 is 2.2, so I'm just going to take the arctan of 0.5, 26.57 degrees. 26.57 degrees, all right. So now I've got enough to solve Snell's Law, right? So n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. And if I want angle, I divide n2 over, and then I take the arc sine 
of that thing, get rid of the sign, and that leaves me with theta 2. Right? So theta 2 would be the arc sine of, and 1 is water, 1.33 times sine of 26.57 over N2. N2 is air, so that's 1. So now let's go and do that. So 1.33 sine 26.57 divided by 1 is the same thing. So now let's take the arc sine of that 36.51 degrees. 36.51 degrees. Does it make sense, right? Always ask yourself that. Does it make sense? So yes, to me that makes sense. So I went in at 26 degrees and I came out and I'm going from a low index to a high index. Low index to high index means you bend away from the normal, right? So that angle should get bigger, and it did. Okay, so does this cause the light viewed from this angle to appear deeper or shallower? Oh, that's a good conceptual question. So let's think about if you were standing right here, like there's your face, and that light is hitting you in the face. Where do you see that light coming from, right? So this ray is what you see but your brain doesn't know that that light bent, right? So this is the path you think that light came from, right? And so if you see, here's the object, right? To you, it's going to look like the object is right there at this level here, right? Have you ever noticed when you look on top of something with water in it, it looks shallower if you look straight down? This is why, because the light is bending when it goes in. So your brain thinks it's coming from here. That makes it seem like it's shallower. So this answer would be, shallower. Okay, here's another one. Diver shines a light up to the surface of a flat glass bottom boat at an angle of 30 degrees relative to the ground. And okay, so it's going through the water, the glass, the air. So let me, let's draw a picture. It always helps to draw pictures. So there's water, glass, air. Air is one, glass is air, water, glass. So glass is 1.5 and water is 1.33. Okay, so the light's going to... I'm going to draw this in a different color. So the light is going to come in at an angle of 30 degrees. All right, there's my normal. And water to glass, it's going from low to high, right? So it's going to bend towards the normal. So it's going to go maybe like this. And then here, it's going from high to low, so it's going to bend away from the normal, but it's going to bend more than it did here because there's a bigger difference between the indices there, right? 1.5 to 1 is a bigger difference in index of refraction than 1.33 and 1.5. So the angle here and the angle here are going to be different. And I'm trying to figure out that last angle. Okay. So at first glance, you might think, oh, no, I have to go from there to there and then there to there, right? And it's not hard, but... It just takes time. So let's write this out. Okay, so here's air equals glass equals water, right? Because it's going from water to glass to air. So water to glass to air. I don't need to go solve all this, right? Because Snell's law is like a, a proportionality. It's a, it's a constant. It's like Bernoulli's equation, right? You're saying one side has to equal the other side, right? This product has to equal this product, has to equal this product, right? So why don't we just skip the middleman not even mess with the glass, and let's just say air equals water, right? So, I mean, you could go solve this and then solve that, right? It's just an extra step because all of these are going to multiply out to the same number, right? So let's just skip ahead. So if I want the angle in air, now this just becomes like a problem we've done before, right? So your angle in the air is going to be equal to the arc sine of water sine theta water over index of air. Easy peasy. So now that's going to equal arc sine of index of fractional water is 1.33 sine theta water was 30 degrees sine 30 over uh, 1 index of fraction of air. Let's go do that. And I get 41.68 degrees. And does it make sense? Again, right? Ask yourself that question. 
So it went in here, I said, at 30 degrees. And by reasoning, I figured that it would come out at a greater angle because 1.33 to 1.5 is not as much as the difference between 1.5 and 1. There's a bigger difference there, so there's going to be a bigger angle. And that makes sense to me because I get 141.68 degrees, which is a bigger angle than down here. So it all works out.